One set. Camera rolling. Sound. The good, the bad, and the just plain standard. Take one. Salut. Hey. All right. Hello again. So, podcast number two. Yes, mm-hmm. we should probably introduce who we are this time, because like, we did the whole podcast and forgot to do like, oh yeah, this is who we are. <laughs> so this, you are currently listening to the good, the bad, and the just plain standard. Mm-hmm. We are myself, Adam. Anouk. Jan. Watch a movie, either recent or... Or in the past, in this case for this podcast, we're watching Victoria, which came out in 2015. So relevant release in... 14. 14? It was 15. 15. It was 15, yes. yeah. It was filmed in 14. That's well, what ah, I meant to true. say. It, it, <laughs> very certainly, it's available on Netflix right now. Yes. Yes. Shockingly, on Netflix, it's two stars. So we'll get into how I feel about that later on in the podcast. Mm-mm. But the purpose of the good, the bad, and the just plain standard is we decide if the film is good... Bad or the worst sin of them all is just plain standard. So, Rubbish. guys, <laughs> Victor- Victoria, uh, let's have Jan start off because this was Jan's suggestion to watch this film. Yes, yeah, so this is a German film that was directed by Sebastian Schipper, that's the name of the director, uh, starring Laia Costa, Frederick Lau, and Franz Rogowski, and loads of extras, and obviously the cinematographer, Sterla Brandt. Groslin, uh, which is relevant because that name is in the first place in the end credits because... This film is one shot. <laughs> this film is an hour and 147 minutes, right? About 138, but it's... Uh, it's it's about two hours 15 then. Mm. Uh, it's one shot the whole way through. How crazy is that? And it's magnificent. <laughs> it took them three goes. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah, actually, yeah, it took them three goes. The way they rehearsed uh, is, okay, they had a plan B, right? Uh, The director wanted uh, from the start to have uh, just one take, but just in case it didn't work, he also had like um, some uh, 10-minute takes that he would like jump cut between. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they had that in the can, which acted as rehearsal. Oh, Right. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. That's very that interesting. Is interesting. And then they did the first take, which wasn't, it didn't have the oomph uh, required. Great. Uh, the second one was just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and the third one was just perfect. That's just the just one right. It's the, yeah. the Goldilocks Fedian film. The third take is always the best one. It's good that it was quite raw as well, because even if they made a mistake with their lines or where to go they could just kind of change it and it would just be part of their character could you, you imagine know? that being in like the last scene of that movie and not getting to the emotional state you need to be and you have to shoot the whole thing again yeah well, I can't edit it. that's so much pressure for an actor the script they had a script they had the script right but it was just 12 pages so it was just directions of stuff happening uh, the whole thing was, well, like a kind of a Commedia dell'arte style. It was totally improvised. Improv. Yeah. Wow. There was no you can dialogue. Kind of, you can kind of feel that because the dialogue in this film is so real. So real. It's so real. I, I, if I'd known that, that may have affected... Because I was just thinking, wow, European cinema is so ahead of us right now. It's, the dialogue is on point. It's just... It's like capturing real life. It was, yeah. And that probably makes it even more intense because you feel like you're in, almost intruding... You yeah. know, you feel like you're there. So you're kind of, there are moments where you're like, oh, I don't really want to be watching this because I feel like I'm intruding on someone's life. Yeah. So we should we have a little plot summary? I'm yes. I'm one of you guys uh, do that. You are, right? I'll have a go. Oh, I can, I can, it's fine. Well, it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. It's a, um, the story of Victoria. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spanish. The, yes, uh, who's a bit lost. Uh, I mean, she, she had some... Uh, uh, music studies and uh, in the end for years and years and in the end she, they were t- they told her well she was not good enough to go to the conservatoire or something so she ends up in Berlin and she meets people and kind of in, well entirely in real time stuff happens and uh, intense and you're well it's kind of a robbery can we say that yeah <laughs> yeah it's, well, a, it's, it's a real life um, evolution of the characters. Uh, through that, yeah. I would. The best way to sum up this movie is it's it's a it's a night out in Berlin, just extreme. Just, Although to be yeah. fair, if you went to some clubs in Berlin, you're probably to have a more intense night out than than this. Than in London, well, sorry, in in Britain. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, well, yeah, because there are a lot more fetish clubs in Berlin, <laughs> in Berlin for sure, but Germany. Kind of makes me glad that I went home relatively early because I didn't want to leave the club and then rob a bank, you know. A new uh-huh, year's uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of sad because you, you also think on a human level, like it, it, this could have been a coming of age film. Because they're just teenagers, they're just young and they're falling in love and they, you know, one of them is having issues with, you know, he feels like he's a bad person and they're just like, you know, have all these relationships and then they get mixed up with gangsters and you're just like, whoa, (laughs) that changed quickly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The thing is, it could have been nominated for an Oscar uh, in terms of quality, but it didn't because it didn't respect the ratio. So to be nominated, it would have been as a foreign uh, feature, right? Yeah. But Mm. there was um, like 51% English. And that's, that's wow. too much. That's too English much. and German. Yeah. And that's just it's weird because they, rena- they renamed that category of film from foreign film to best film not in the English language, which I feel if you apply that mm. criteria to this film, I agree that it's not, it doesn't qualify as a, for- as a film not in the English language mm. because it is in English. Most, it doesn't. It is a it is a German film, and it is it feels like a piece of European cinema, which is good for sure. Because I love European cinema. Any European cinema and Eurovision, Eurovision. <laughs> it's very different. Eurovision is a different, a whole different category <laughs> altogether. But European cinema and television, I mean to say, like uh, the Killing and the Bridge, these sort of like Scandinavian dramas. Oh yes, you know, like they are life times ahead of what's going on in right our. And what we see is mainstream, you know. They're so raw and they're so um, able to uh, show, like, just raw yeah. um, human emotion. I mean, the bridge feels like an HBO show. Like, it feels that intense, you know. Right. So, they're, and their cinema, when done well, is fantastic. And this film, it just blew me away. It really did. It really did. You, I, I do enjoy watching them, foreign films, actually. I should stop saying foreign films. But if I say foreign films, I don't mean foreign films. I mean film not in the English language. It's just that's a mouthful. Um, But this... I had no expectations going in because I didn't know what this was. I didn't didn't know it was a German film. And I I only knew that it was a a continuous one-shot because Jan told me it was a continuous one-shot film. Yeah, I didn't know that it was a... See, I would call it a foreign film. Sorry, non-English film. Because it just felt so non-English. Oh yeah. It's... So I, 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 that's probably why we keep on calling it a foreign, non-English for. Don't worry about film. it. People know we're not being offensive. We're not right. like this foreign but that's film when it changed coming it. over here, stealing our screen time, <laughs> taking up valuable space in the net, Netflix library. Yeah. I want more BBC programs. I don't know. Maybe it's because the Brits are scared of you know feeling emotion or showing emotion. This but is actually, Europeans have got I mean, it down to a T. This didn't do any wonders for like the Berlin um, tourist board, probably. I mean, I don't think many like English Defence League people were going. You know what? Let's have a holiday to Germany. Maybe there's like let's stay here. Yes, but I mean, they had they had reasons why they got. It wasn't just like oh, we're in Germany. Oh, there's mafia everywhere. No, that's what I like. I mean, know. the film could have been anywhere, but it landed itself well to be in Germany. And I, we, your yeah. mom uh, is from Germany. Yes, she's from Cologne or Köln, as they say in Germany, and now lives in Berlin. She so does. we've we've been and we visited. Yes. So these, when you're seeing these shots walking through the streets, having been there, it, I think it adds something in a way because you can identify with the place more, right. and it feels more real to me because you can see yourself being in those streets. Yeah, and to be fair, the way the film's done, it's like you're there with them. Yeah. That's what I mm-hmm. I true. I think that's what it was going for. Yes, you're well, in you're you're on Victoria's night out. Yeah, you know. Well, so, guys, in terms of experience uh, watching those kinds of movies before and actually acting in them, what well, what uh, well, we've uh, we talked about Patrick Tucker in an earlier podcast, and we well he calls those uh, single developing shots, right? Yes. So, how do you feel it uh, changes stuff in terms of your acting and? Uh, kind of stuff I feel I said this to Nick when I was watching the film actually I feel when we're doing something as when you're acting in a single shot or a continuous shot I have to say I've never been in a continuous shot that's more than say four minutes usually what 
we get is soap. Soap use it a lot, or they used to use it a lot. It's the tracking shot where um, you'll be able to see two people in the same shot. So usually it's like a, an argument uh, between a wife and a husband, say one of them cheating on each other. And the reason, uh, one of the major reasons is because when you film on a soap, it's for time, right? Mm. So because this film is planned out, and it, I, don't, I think they knew when they were going to go and do each section. Like, they would have to be ahead. There have to be a plan of when they're going to hit each scene. But yes, I yes, do they, feel in the same way that they were they were able to take their time with it. Well, first of all, they built the club. They, they, oh, did they? Yeah, yeah, because, uh, you know, one of the things I picked up from... Uh, I talked it earlier also in the podcast. Um, the uh, course, Elliot Grove course is you, you have to like your script to be able to, to optimize the budget uh, just like they did with the Reservoir Dogs all locations very close to each other oh yes so yeah. that's why they, they didn't have a club close to the rest of the locations so um, yeah. that's quite interesting it, yeah, it did look very makeshift. I mean, you'd probably have to have a trained eye to see it because it was very good. But I did notice that there were some points where it looked very like uh, it looked like a set. So that that does make sense. I didn't I didn't know the club was a, a set, so I think they did pretty well. No, no, they did. No, no, I wasn't saying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Going on Jan's point, what was it? Uh, what was it like acting as a continuous shot? I feel it's like a play. This movie to me felt like a play. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I went on a journey with them. Whereas in film, because you're cutting in between shots, it looks great and you enjoy watching it and you, it's seamless. But when you're watching something like this, you can just throw yourself into it. And you, you connect in a way to actors that you don't usually find, I think. So acting-wise, I would say it's you have to be present. It's one of these... Exp- you have to be so proficient with the, the terminology and the technique of filming for camera because... Getting in front of a camera compared to acting on stage is like chalk and cheese. It's mm. so it's so starkly different, and to be able to just seamlessly be in the moment throughout for a whole two hours and fifteen with a camera popping around really close to you, there are some really close shots in this film. It's just pretty. It's a testimony, and it's like it's the same way. Like European theatre is light years ahead of what we're doing right now in the UK. <laughs> so. It's just yes. amazing to see these um, so technically proficient and acting proficient actors in this film. It was a joy. It was a joy to watch. It and really, really was. It made me want to be in a continuous film. It did. I'd love to, especially because, I mean, being on set, you'll know that, you know, it's in chunks until they have to change camera position, change up sound, maybe they have to cut... But because they're not doing that, the actor's experience is completely continuous. And so in that regard, yes, it's like maybe not even rehearsal. It's like being on the night um, doing a show like at the Fringe or being at theatre. Like it's continuous. And actually it leads up to one of probably the most raw moments I've ever seen on screen, which is when she that grief scene where she cries. Oh, at the end. Um, I have never seen grief right. like yeah, that. that was very good. Yeah. It was so, it was, it was almost too much um, to handle, you know, like you wanted to stop watching because it was yeah. so like, this is such a private moment. That's what I meant in the intro when I was talking about earlier on in the podcast, when I said, um, imagine root, like getting to that scene. This was the scene I was on about. Um, yeah. So, I can't, it's weird this movie, I don't really want to spoil it because I feel that, I feel that not knowing how it goes makes it so much more enjoyable. It's part of the experience. So, yeah. this is one of the rare podcasts we do where we're going to avoid the spoilers as much as possible. Be warned, there will be spoilers but we won't go in depth about certain aspects of the story. But there is a scene at the end of the movie where um, our main character, Victoria, experiences this terrible loss and... The actress just goes for it, you know, like full on. I've never seen somebody experience. The thing that got me in that scene is you see like saliva coming out in a, in a trail. It's not from, beautiful from to watch. Ma- from, her, from her mouth. I've never seen somebody do that, but I can pretty much picture that's what you could be doing, you know? It would not, nothing in this film didn't feel believable. There was nothing right. faked. And I feel that comes from when you do continuous shots. It's really hard to fake anything because yeah. 
You can. I mean, for example, I didn't notice this, and you will now because I mentioned it. Uh, when they're when they're going to the roof in the beginning of the movie. Um, you can see the cameraman's left hand when they go up the stairs. The cameraman's hand's there. Oh, no, but, really? That's but it hilarious. makes sense, because how else do you get a camera up, you know? This guy's running around with a camera in a in a steady cam harness, you know? Yeah. Oh, he didn't use a steady cam, I think I read. Didn't he? I think he did use a steady cam. I think it was. I think I read that he didn't use a steady cam. No, I think you're right. You didn't... Well, I've seen um, on YouTube there is just one video of a guy filming from his uh, window one of the three shots and it doesn't look like the guy has a Steadicam. No. I mean, not the the standard, like, uh, very, very that's expensive actually, one. That's actually true because a lot of... Sh- you do feel the bobbing, actually. So yeah, especially right. when they go down the stairs. I mean, there's a, there's a few scenes where they're going up and down stairs and they're kind of like tenement building stairs like council state stairs so mm. very narrow yeah um and so it must have been really difficult to kind of, and obviously no editing and no <laughs> time to stop and change things up like it's continuous the whole oh yeah, i just so don't know how you, there's such a big feat it must be quite difficult to do the coloring aspect on film for this because could you imagine like you'd have to go by frame by frame and saturate each pit Although, although you would probably make an edit and then put it back together because it is one shot. You would do, cut it into sections, make your make it look good, and then just put it all back together. Right. I would imagine that's how they did it. Yeah. But, yeah. This it's just there's so much on this film that you think if it went, that's what I was thinking all the time. It's like imagine if this had gone wrong, like in a horrible way. It's like because <laughs> I didn't want it because you don't want it because you see how much they go through and you see how long that shoot is. The best, the thing I enjoyed the most is the actual ca- continuation of time throughout. For example, when she leaves the club at the beginning of the movie, it's pretty dark. And by the start of the movie, the sun's rise, risen, really rise, risen. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my favourite thing about the movie. Like, you can see passage of time. You went on a journey with something and you yeah. rarely see that yeah. in the cinema. And it's such a horrific journey as well that you kind of go through every emotion with with her, with the protagonist, and she goes through so much that at the end, in that scene where you see grief for the for the first time, mm. um, you also because you've you've lived with her <laughs> for yeah. like a few hours, you understand that grief so much more than maybe if it was edited because you feel like you've been on the night with her. Yeah. So it's not just the fact that something has just happened. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Something awful has just happened. It's like the whole thing. The fact that she's in Berlin, the fact that she's alone, the fact that she's missed work, probably. <laughs> she might be fired. You That's... know, all these things kind of get into your head and it's like, oh my God. Do you know you what? Know? The, one of the lingering things when this movie ended, uh, I went, did, did somebody clean up the sick on the cafe floor? Because the, there's a scene in the movie where one of the guys come in and froze up on the No, the they floor. didn't. And it's like, somebody's got to come into work and be like, oh, yeah. for fuck's sake. Actually, that's something that, that's, that stood out for me is, funnily enough, when the protagonist and the camera, it's the first time that they've, like, split. Mm. <laughs> Do you yeah, know what I mean? Because she walks out and that really stood out because it was immediately, like... Something's different. She's... she's um, It's not just a mid-shot because quite a lot of it is in mid-shot. Mid-shot? Yeah, I would say mid shot most. Yeah. So from top of the head to torso, usually actually shorter than that, like shoulder. Mm. So it's all kind of really tight filming. It's like gorilla POV. Yeah, right, 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 <laughs> exactly. Not a, a gorilla, like gorilla warfare. Yeah. Not like, not like the, the bloke in the Cadbury's advert is like going around with the steady cam. Right, and, and the last cams. shot that you see is. Um, her walking away from the camera and then you. So yeah. it just like, wow, yeah. you know, because you're not part of her life anymore and you have no idea where she's going. She never writes. And she you have calls. no idea. But also you, you feel like you've lived through it with her. Yeah. So you're, it feels like you've lost something and you want to follow her. But obviously it's a cat. Like, you can't. It's a movie. <laughs> it's, it's a movie. Go home. <laughs> you're in bed. <laughs> so um, as of today, this is the longest, um, long, um, one shot movie that's ever been made, like one hundred and thirty-four really? or thirty-eight. So it's longer than Russian Ark, then. Yeah, Russian Ark is ninety-six minutes. 
that was two thousand wow. yeah, two thousand and two. Alexander Sukarov. We'll get to that film one day. Yeah, uh, it's a good well, film. I yeah, we'll get to the actual film at some point in one podcast that I reckon. But I have a list <laughs> of uh, a few other um, notable uh, long takes, <laughs> maybe either fake ones for full features or just some scenes. Uh, if you'd like to hear about that, go on. Then. <laughs> Is a uh, is before you start. I only know one. Uh, it's what's it called? In is it in Rutero or the Birdman one? Yeah, Birdman. Birdman's the one that's faked. Yeah, I know that one. Well, I think there are like only six or seven uh, real ones. So there's Victoria Russian Ark. There is uh, another one. PVC one, two thousand seven, eighty-five minutes. I was not able to find any. Uh, well, to watch it, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, there was an Argenti- Argentinian uh, movie, The Silent House, 2011, which is uh, just like Russian Ark, 90 minutes, uh, single shot. This movie was remaked in 2012, um, but this time it's a fake one. It's just uh, 12 minute long shots that are stitched together. Uh, ah. Kind of seamlessly. Uh, cheeky cheeky yeah, yeah in terms of fake ones there's the well the most famous one is Rope the 1948 Hitchcock movie um, it's well, I don't remember how long it is but Hitchcock uses some uh, when uh, it, it looks like he's bumping on someone's coat and it's just, you get a tiny black and then it carries on oh, right, okay. so it's uh, okay. because of the um, the film stock that was not long enough to go more than... Uh, yeah, I would that's imagine. That's interesting. That would, that would, yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to have, buy film reel that long. Right. Could you imagine? It'd my, be heavy. I mean, my dad, who's a, a director, and he also dabbles in writing scripts and screenplays, and he dabbles in film, basically. Um, he still has massive film reels. Mm. They're heavy. In the, <laughs> and they're really heavy, yeah. And he has, like... Um, like Rect, small rectangular laminate um, color blinds that you put in front of the camera to kind of change the oh, color yeah, like of the filters. So yeah, I, I can I can kind of understand why so many of these single shot um, films are kind of in the two thousands because digital. it would have been to, insane. Yeah, as soon, to as we, do. as soon as we get onto digital, it becomes a more realistic idea to do it. Right, easier. I couldn't imagine doing this on film. No. No, no, Any no. other fake ones, Jan? Well, this one is this year, uh, 2017, Bushwick. I have no idea what it's about, mm. but it's uh, yeah, just one, as we call in French, actually, plan séquence, so that's a long take, uh, mm. but invisible cuts are uh, here and there. Mm. Yeah, so, so that's mainly for the fake ones. Um, I have some other scenes from movies, like have uh, Orson Welles multiple times in his Macbeth. The whole murder scene is just... A 10 minute uh, long take. Wow. Um, Touch of Evil 1958, also Orson Welles. Uh, the first scene starts with a crane shot and it follows the car for uh, quite a long time until it explodes. Uh, nice. The movie by Robert Altman, The Player, 1992, has an homage, um, a direct reference to that uh, scene. There's also Path of Glory, Kubrick. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 55. When the Kirk Douglas advances into the trench, or is it called trench? Or yeah. tranché? It would be a trench, yes. Yeah. Trench. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, 1980, Kubrick again, uh, using Steadicam, uh, no, notably for the uh, when Danny is on his uh, bicycle, oh, tricycle. In, in the show, in, in, uh, when, when Wendy Great is followed scene. by Jack in the stairs. Great scenes. And the final uh, labyrinth scene is also. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, yeah. It's just, it is, yeah. Do you know what's interesting about the um, the actual continuous shots and even some of the faked ones? They're mostly non-English movies. Yeah. It's world cinema. That's interesting. So it's only us that aren't trying to make continuous shot movies. No. I wonder why. I've got Quentin Tarantino here. You know, Have you? Oh. You remember The Graduate, right? Yeah. The first scene on the... On the um, ah, kind okay. Of, uh, the stuff you have in um, airports... Moving. Oh, the moving ground thing that everyone like tries yes. to run backwards a lot. So we've got something exactly, well, an homage uh, in Jackie Brown f- f- uh, from Tarantino. And Joss Whedon. Mm-hmm. He, uh, in Certainty Avengers, Avengers 2, he has uh, also long takes 
like in Serenity, you've got Malcolm Reynolds, my favorite captain in the universe, uh, <laughs> doing some stuff, and it's just one shot. Uh, the one in Avengers, when you follow around the whole city, uh, and uh, it stops uh, briefly on each individual Avenger and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and there's one that we actually watched bits of uh, with Patrick, uh, you know, the one on the stairs, uh, the protector, right? Oh, my God, that's amazing. Um, that's the fight scene up there. That's the... Didn't that take like three years to make or something, that one scene? Or was it three That was months? amazing. I don't know. I can't remember the details, but that's the... It took a long isn't time. It, isn't it, is it Japanese or is it Korean? Oh, I didn't get that info. I think it might Tony be, Ja is a... Oh, I, think it might be Jap- I think it might be Japanese or Chinese. We could be wrong there. Japanese, I don't think so. Um, Japan- oh, right. But that, talking about Lost in Translation again, oh. um, the US uh, title was The Protector, the UK was Warrior King, and in France it was just uh, L'Honneur du Dragon. No, I, I've got a few of those again. So do you remember the Scorsese movie uh, Hugo? Oh, the, the yeah, the animation. The fur- um, Is that uh, no, no, no? No, I'm getting confused. No, it's uh, heavily CGI, uh, I believe, but no, not animation. Well, the first whole scene, uh, Paris overview, um, well, flying over Paris and then going to the Gare Montparnasse and stuff is just one, uh, just one, huh. yeah. And okay, just two, two more. Uh, there's a French film called Les Petits Mouchoirs, uh, directed by Guillaume Canet. Who starts with a long take where we follow Jean Dujardin until uh, there's an accident and stuff. So that's the end of... And the last one, um, series, Daredevil. I don't know if you noticed this one. Is that the, uh, the one in the hallway, the fight scene? Yes, yes. yes three minutes. Yeah, a good fight scene, though. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a very good. That's an homage. They even said that's an homage to... So I can't remember what's an homage to, but it's definitely an homage. <laughs> I to something. I haven't seen the end of Daredevil yet. I need to get back no. into that. Defenders just came out. Yeah. Let's yeah. put a timestamp on this. Defenders just came out <laughs> yesterday. Okay, I've got just two other ones then. Uh, this one is just a series of long takes. So there is a movie which was released in 2002 called Irreversible, which is very hard. It's uh, The structure is... Backwards, a bit like Memento kind of stuff. So All it right. starts well, it starts at the end and uh, it's reversed. And there is a rape scene in there with Monica Bellucci. That's nine minutes. Oh gosh! Which is pretty gruesome. Yeah, it sounds awful. Yeah, it's just it's just a rape scene in reverse. Jeez. No, this one is uh, dark, in one uh, shot. Yeah. Oh god. Nine minutes. Yeah, it's just oh, that's intense. Disgusting. And and. 2013, uh, Gravity. Loads of uh, oh, long yeah. takes, including a 17 minutes at the very start. So that was my uh, <laughs> cultural moment. Fun facts with Jan. Yeah. Wow. I have to admit, talking about that rape scene, um, that's the way to do high intensity moments in film, is absolutely continuous or long takes. One shot. One shot takes. There's a scene in this movie where they are forced to take cocaine and T- tilicum? Til- tilidum? Tilidum, uh, which is a opiate drug. Painkiller. Which also in, in states euphoria. I don't know this personally. I looked it up. Don't, <laughs> don't worry. Sorry, mother. Hallucin- um, hallucinations. It's basically to make them jacked up to do the robbery. Right. But it seems hard to watch. It really is. It really is. I think it goes back to your point you made about intruding. Like you feel like you're there with them. Right. I mean, I, I don't know where those guys went because we've, I don't know if we told that already on the podcast, but we've been studying at the same school last year, right? Drama school? I don't yes. think we mentioned it. The and the technique we used is everything that is not method acting. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I could use our technique for so long with it working. I, I don't know. Yeah, that would be a tough one. We do what's called mindset acting. It's similar to uh, Meisner is the closest to mm. what we do. Um, or trained in. I say what we do. We're up, open to all frames of yeah. technique. You know, whatever gets you there, gets you there. Um, yeah, it seems like that would be tough for a mindset. You'd have to you'd have to have an as if, you know, you'd have to know. Or maybe you wouldn't, because you are taking something. You have the you have the physical thing there with you. You know, you have this I don't know what they probably used. Well it's just improv. It's just improv, yeah. I mean then mm. I reckon 
fake, you couldn't fake it because I reckon I reckon in the right environment and the stakes and the pressure as well of doing one take I think you get that I think, I think that would affect me knowing that I have to get this right the pressure right. like, you're running on adrenaline because like you're doing well because you in the head, somewhere in your head you're going my god we've got 30 minutes in my god we're an hour in my god we're an hour and a half in you just have my to god obli- we've got 10 minutes to go you just have to obliterate the crew from your mind because yeah. was a, in the video I talked about earlier someone filming from his window right so there was just well the actress uh, doing the shtick and the cinematographer and the boom guy with the sound recording uh, stuff. Equipment. And the director was uh, jumping around uh, behind, but it was not always uh, there for the shooting. But he's in the time. movie. The director's in the movie. He's um, Oh, for a split second. He's one of the people when she comes out of the club the first time when she gets her bike, uh, he's okay. out there. Mm. And uh, another fun fact, the pol- one of the police cars that just rolls past in the background is completely coincidental. <laughs> it's great. So that there's a scene where they're getting chased by the cops and a car goes past and it's completely accidental. Yeah, and they <laughs> just kind of... Ca- so, and it was a real police... A Berlin police car. Yeah. And obviously the one that they actually used was a fake. Um, yes. Because yeah. obviously they co- they couldn't bring the, the actual police. police. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or, or kind of allow the police to come and, and get involved. But yeah. So the one that you can properly properly see in the scene is just because it was coming into shot, That's and they were great. like, "We're oh, just going to use this because it's so perfect." <laughs> yeah. Well, they only had the budget for three takes. So That's what gonna... I was thinking too. <laughs> Amazing! Yeah. Yeah. Usually, yes. I think oh, everything. I think most <laughs> continuous films, they would you would only get three goals at it. I reckon a studio, if by some miracle, because I don't see any coming out soon by my mainstream Hollywood, um, if they gave you the budget. I reckon you would only have enough time to do three before the studio pulled the plug and went, nah, yeah, want our money back. No, no, of course. I mean, it's it's a mindset thing as well, isn't it? Like, for example, um, on Graham Norton, um, uh, shout out <laughs> Carlisle, who was Begbie. Oh, uh, Robert, Robert, uh, Robert, Robert yeah. Carlisle. Robert, Car- sorry, Scottish, Robert Carlyle. Scottish actor. Amazing actor, Very um, actor says that while he was shooting Train Spotting, he tried not to stay at home. Oh, because, when he's shooting Train Spotting too, yeah, yeah, because he has to get into this like really aggressive, violent mindset, mm. and he can't. He doesn't want to be around his kids and his family when he's in that. And I feel like um, being on stage, for example, for um, especially me, like I've done a rape, rape scene. Well, me and Adam have done a rape scene together on <laughs> yeah. set. Yes, that. Sorry, on yeah. on set on um in a theater in a theater show. Yeah, after the end by Dennis Kelly. Yes, um, and with people watching and the adrenaline that you have and just the whole situation, it increases your feeling of um. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. It affects you. I mean, when there's a, we did that scene and it wasn't the last scene that we did. It was, it's like the second or third last scene. Yeah. So you had to carry on acting afterwards. It it hits you when you, when you do something like that and you actually experience it as an actor. Um, not actually, but you know, you, you get to the mindset that you're doing it. Yeah. It affects you. And I feel that's the the thing in this movie when they rob the bank and this is a heist movie. Uh, you feel the tension. You can feel the elif- the elation they have when they're celebrating getting away. You feel... And when they're driving away in the car and they're all panicking that they're being followed, you feel the tension. I'm sure the actors felt it too because you can hear it in their voices, like how convincingly panicked they are. Right. And it is how much is it, um, you know, on set, for example, if the camera positions are changing all the time, how much do you then have to kind of jack yourself up for the next scene yeah. while they're trying to change the camera? And remembering, what, and remembering the scene, what, see, what comes before this scene. And that's you know? why I brought up the fact that we've done a rape scene because it's continuous and you have to do it and then you have to carry on acting afterwards. There's probably a difference between doing a that and then doing on camera. On, on, on camera. But then doing it... Um, that intense heist, um, burglary, police chase stuff um, in a single shot must be exactly the same kind of feeling of, oh, Jesus Christ, like I have to keep acting and I have to keep this up. But yeah. your whole body is probably in, you know, fight or flight mode, you know, even on a human level. Mm. Like, 
I want to get out because you feel like you're in it. So that must have been really interesting for the right. actors. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually, I, I, I didn't know how much uh, experience they had beforehand, like if they had training or if they were just, because they were so natural, sometimes I know that directors kind of look for non-actors mm-hmm. because they want someone that's just kind of, you know, off the streets. And It felt very much like they weren't, I don't know, this might be a massive discredit to them actually, but um, I feel like they were relatively unknown German actors and Spanish. I don't actually know where Victoria's from, but she could be Spanish. I mean, um, in she was terms of... In terms of public, uh, probably not, but uh, I've heard, well, investigating this, that the casting director, uh, when asked to find the girl, she, she gave her name straight away. Wow. She knew, that, that's the girl you want. That's, uh, yeah. so All right, knew. so they knew. So maybe, that's so she's, she's, a, she's an actress then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, she's probably well known, maybe in Spain or... In Europe. She, in Europe. That's um, such a shame, because she's so good, and I wish she was in more things, you know? And her, she does most of her acting in English, and she's good, you know. Right. I feel I just that's the horrible us and them mentality of like not even not necessarily UK cinema because UK tele, television and cinema is its own well British cinema I should say has its own feel to it. You know, it's st- right. specialized as the way we see European cinema and Scandinavian cinema. It's got its own feel to it. And Britain has that too. Yeah, you, you Britain watch a has, British film and you go, oh, it's, this is a British movie. Britain has that kind of cold starkness. Yes. You know, like everything's pretty depressing. And or they can do an <laughs> upbeat thing, but they're, they're not afraid to touch on darker topics. Right. Them. Whereas when you see Hollywood movies, everything's like colourised. It's like also, looking rose tinted glasses. Oh yeah, and European is a little bit more... It's dark, but it's more kind of... Uh, emotional it's not, I want to say think, I think the best way to describe European cinema is it's, it's not afraid to take risks and it yeah. believes in what it's doing because when I, was, when I was sitting there watching this movie I went would this film work if it wasn't a continuous shot honestly I don't think it would I don't think this movie the way it's structured it would need a it would need a rewrite I think it would need a rewrite it would need a sure. rewrite to be a uh, like a Hollywood let's call it Hollywood because we're calling it a conventional a conventional movie that we see nowadays but their conviction and passion to make it a continuous shot makes the movie and it doesn't just make the movie it makes it an incredible movie it's like actually probably one of my favourite like I, I, I want to see it again yeah. now like right now it was so f- effing good yeah. excuse my friend <laughs> good choice well we don't know about uh, FCC if they will censor us well there's no FCC in the UK is there no not really <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, like, BBS, what are we doing about swear words? BBFC <laughs> will give us, like, a title card, like, 12A. Which <laughs> 18. I never understood 12As, right? Because you can go see a 12A, but you can be sitting next to a five-year-old if the parent brings them in. You yeah. Know? It's bizarre. It's very strange. That's, uh, I think it's not R-rated. What's the below R in America? It's, like, teen or uh, something like that. It's, like, NC-17? PG-13. PG-13. It would be PG-13 is R-12A. Right, right, right. Which basically means anyone can see it as long as a parent approves and going to see it. But anything above that in Britain, you can't see it. I think it's anyone above 25 as well. It doesn't have to be a parent. Oh, right. It can be parent or guardian. Okay. So if the person is over 20, I think it's 25, it's not 21. 21's a bit young. No, I'm 21. I wouldn't bring anyone with me. Yeah. <laughs> can I see Planet of the Apes? No. Sure. <laughs> oh, why? Or I think we could get this show on the satellite radio because they don't care I actually went to see Craig Ferguson live at the Fringe uh, the last three nights and uh, well if you if you watch his compilations on YouTube always uh, flirting with beautiful actresses <laughs> and uh, every time there's a curse word you see a little flag on his mouth with uh, uh, some words in the, in the language All right, okay well I take it that uh, nowadays on serious exam it doesn't give a well doesn't care because it's a swear fest. To be fair, mm-hmm. the only thing that we'd get is a not safe for work labeling, really. Ah, We're not yeah. that bad. It's a couple of words. We're not like saying the C word. That's pretty bad. No. Oh. Not yet, anyway. But uh, yeah, as Craig said, the C word means something different in uh, Scotland. 
<laughs> yes, right, right, it really sucks. Yeah, it does, it totally does, yeah. It's a good thing, it's a totally good thing. You could be a good C, you know, you could be great. Oh dear, that's very true. You know, you could be it. like a cheeky C. You could C. be a cheeky C. C My word. mum used to call me that when I was a kid. She used to go, oh, who's a cheeky wee C? And then I told her this, like, what it meant years on, and she was mortified. Oh, yeah, bugger. Oh, can't believe it. <laughs> so, uh Victoria, yes. Should we, what was everyone's favourite scene? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Shall I start? I know yeah. what mine is. Yeah, we'll My favourite one is um, at, the, so at the very start of the movie, uh, when she's flirting with terribly with the barman, right? Oh, yeah. And you can just tell that she's alone because they linger on her just too long. Yeah. It's too long for comfort. And she's lonely. And, and it, that's actually a really good point because there's a, no other reason why she would stay around with these people yeah there's multiple know? times where she could leave and they don't force her to stay they never they never say you have to stay she but she's, chooses to stay throughout the film she's definitely a lonely lost mm. girl i'm still in awe at um the whole thing. <laughs> that, yeah the whole thing was amazing there, there are two scenes that really um st- w- would stand st- out. St- stood out um was the grief scene in the hotel room mm. um I think that whole bit was amazing. Even with, you know, when she's in and out and he's putting on the TV and he's obviously going through whatever and I'm trying to do this without spoilers. Um, <laughs> and, you know, she's coming in and out and helping him and then her falling off the bed and then that kind of moment of peace. It's funny because because it's a continuous shop, you don't really know when to stop. <laughs> your favourite scene because there yes, are no that's, scenes that's a good point actually that's a really good point I, I realised I was just about to do a running commentary of the yes, rest of like, and then the rest of that was... I, was, I was about to say that yeah, yeah good point <laughs> what correction what was your favourite part of the yeah, continuous moment. shot what was your oh. favourite between 5 to 30 seconds of this movie uh, I liked the flat bit with a baby oh, oh god yeah. Jesus yeah. That was insane. Was... Oh man! And also, I feel like the the drugs helped. You know, I feel like both what, of them wouldn't it? act. Yes, I was really enjoying my cocaine <laughs> at the time, and um, it really helps. You know, uh... Uh, you would love Craig Ferguson always <laughs> talking about drugs every time. Our favorite. No, um, I, I just mean that you see a different side to them both. Yes. And obviously that could be adrenaline and that could, but then you also, it, it connects the mafia to that scene, which I quite like. The fact that they're a lot more aggressive and they were, and I don't want to put that only to drugs, but you know, I think it's that very, I think it's a situational thing. It's like a deer in headlights. Like they have to get out of this building. You just like, do something. They right. have to do whatever's necessary to get out and get away. It's, it's, it's intense, man. Yeah. Jan, favorite section? Well, as I just said... Oh, they're flat, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine, yeah, the shot uh, was... Uh, the flat, sorry, man. <laughs> that was very good. Sorry, I zoned out. The baby, like, yeah, don't worry, we'll put it there. We'll put it in the corner, you <laughs> yeah. know. The police scene is in it really good as well. Yeah. Where each of them gets hurt. That's, that's the one uh, part of... Uh, that was uh, on YouTube. They were filmed from the window. Oh, okay. That's, that's so, yeah, so, so you see the, the little park and... The, yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, it's it's that that is also really really good. You guys just need to go see it, man. Good. And it's on Netflix, so no one has any excuses. Yeah, this time. it's on Netflix today because uh, they tend to uh, take them off at random take, bits. Uh, Well, it was not produced by Netflix, so there's a slight chance that it might not be there when you. Uh, we should say it's now available on UK Netflix. Oh, we're bro- yes, we're sorry. broadcasting from the UK. Yes, uh, Glasgow. I would I would hope that it is on the German Netflix. It should be. It should be. It should be. But again, it'd be very. It's if you can't find it, Amazon. You know. Yeah, I'm sure you can find it in any form somehow. We'll put it in a link dump. We'll put a link to the copy of the DVD Blu-ray right. for this movie. I, I was... think we should do that. If we recommend a movie, we should definitely drop a link for yeah. the for the for the Amazon page. I think there's also something that DVD. W- would be quite nice if we had any questions or any queries or if we said something wrong, what would be nice if we had like a comment Comments. section or like an uh, email address that anyone could kind of yeah, email just, us and be like, "Sorry, you were wrong," or "I really like this." Just like and... have a discussion, like say what you, what was your favorite scene, um, or 
suggestions for what we should go and see if we if we like this what else should we see yeah exactly i quite like the idea of people linking in for each other saying what we should see because yeah. this was a follow-on from baby driver jan suggested this movie after seeing the opening sequence of baby driver and i get where he's coming from now right it's like a darker version <laughs> yeah. of um if you like baby, baby driver. driver you'll like this because victoria kind of is like baby from baby driver just lost in this situation that she goes along with right just kind of hollywood. and actually that that kind of connects me to what i was trying to say the last time like victoria is kind of what i meant by saying that baby driver is a is a hollywood film mm. and so if you're going to see it just keep that in mind that that it is it is fun and it is happy and then victoria is kind of of the that version well, if you stop Baby Driver becoming an action comedy and turn it into a crime heist movie. Right. <laughs> a just... European cinema crime ho- crime heist movie. Yes. So there you go. There we go. Yeah. Um... So that leads us on to the, the inevitable question. Uh-huh. Jan, um, Nick. Yes. Is this film mm-hmm. good, bad, or just a plain standard? It's um, good. Mm. It's effing rabbish. <laughs> it's, it's, you know what, after all this discussion of me even saying like this is the best thing I've seen, this is just a standard movie. You know? <laughs> so it's been so there, standard. done that. Continuous shot. Everyone does that. Ha! Just, rubbish. Just plain good. Just plain good. It's, yeah, it's, it's above good. It's, it's above good. It's, it's, yeah, that's right. It's insane. It's yes. So good. It's great. It's it is. Go and see it. For sure. a shadow of the doubt. Just put it on. It's, it's, and the right best now. thing about it, right? Usually when films are two hours and fifteen, you're like, oh for God's sake, this goes on forever. This does not feel like two hours and fifteen minutes. No. Oh my god, no. It was like um we saw a theatre production the other day and it was four and a half hours long. And it <laughs> yeah. felt like an hour because it was so amazing. Yes. This uh, restless house. This restless, this restless house. house. Playing at the Citizens Theatre, or probably by the time this podcast comes out, it will be at the Edinburgh International Arts Festival. Right. Go and yeah, see it's it. It's at the very... Lycium, Edinburgh. If you Where is can. it at? At the Lycium. Is that the Lyceum. 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 The, Lyceum. the Lyceum. They have the same kind. Of, they in, have the same in London, but not Edinburgh version. No, Lyceum. 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 Lyceum's a good theatre. Okay. Yeah, definitely go and see it. We'll, we'll make sure this podcast is out while this is. Well, that is still there because it's worth seeing this restless house. So, really is really worth um, seeing. Yeah, so it was it was really good. It's good. So currently, our both films that we've seen of Baby Driver and Victoria are in the good category. So, I'm enjoying seeing good films. I'm not looking <laughs> forward to when we're watching the plain standards. Yeah, let's watch the room next. <laughs> No, we got to save that for like <laughs> episode 100. That movie is weird because it's a good movie, a bad movie, and a terrible movie. What about the Emoji movie? Oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. The next one has to be a recent release. So... Oh, yes. Um, um, emoji movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Tell you what, we'll, we'll post... The world is not waiting. We will release to the audience what our next one is. <laughs> we'll let you know. A couple of weeks before we release the podcast. <laughs> so keep up to date with us on Instagram and Facebook. All those links will be found when this pod- podcast comes out. We'll put them somewhere. Oh, yeah. Either yeah. On, eventually, our, we will host this podcast on our Milk and a Wine Glass website. Yes, but when that's us. Yes. Until uh, then, it'll probably be through social media that you'll hear about us and through SoundCloud and iTunes podcast. Uh, yeah, iTunes, uh, SoundCloud is dying, but it's for now, still there. Let's keep it alive. Yeah. <laughs> like it's still alive. Yeah. Make SoundCloud great. Again. Yes. <laughs> Trump, that's your and, next um, um, frontier. Yeah, and on uh, probably on YouTube, but there's some yes, uh, backgrounds true. added and stuff. So. Yeah. Thanks very much for listening. Go and see Victoria. Yes. The links for the movie will be found. And this restless house. And this restless house. <laughs> Hello, um, this has been the good, the bad, and the just plain standard. This mm-hmm. has been Adam. Uh, I'm Anouk. This has been Jan. And thanks for listening. We'll Thank see you next you. time. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.